Hello, welcome to today's immigration tidbit. So you or someone you know are thinking about getting married for purposes of the green card? Well, that would be a mistake. Uh, a lot of people think that they're smarter than U.S. immigration, that nobody's going to know, and that it's the quickest, fastest way to get the green card. Uh, but over my three decades or so, I think it's actually been more than that now, of uh, practicing law, uh, I've seen a lot of cases that were unanticipated by the person who committed the marriage fraud. First of all, you have to understand that marriage fraud itself has penalties for both sides, okay? Uh, there's possible conviction and uh, violations of law for the U.S. citizen, okay? And then, of course, for the foreign national, there would be deportation and then a bar for life uh, from getting any immigration benefits, okay? Um, so it does carry legal risks on both sides. That's the first thing. A lot of times the U.S. citizen doesn't think there's any penalties whatsoever. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But that's not the case. It, it's not that the U.S. government will go after the U.S. citizen every time, but if they decide to, they certainly can and they can prosecute. Okay? Um, so let me tell you some of the things that have happened in the past unexpected by the person who committed the marriage fraud, by the person I'm referring here to the foreign national. Um, so you know, the typical story, they come in, they pay $10,000 or some, you know, ridiculously high amount of money um, to marry somebody, okay, um, to get the green card. So what is it that some of the things that happen? Well, first of all, um, sometimes they get the green card. Sometimes they think they're home free. Uh, and then sure enough, what happens is five, 10 years down the road. I mean, it never ends. Uh, the U.S. citizen calls and says, hello, I'm kind of low on money and I'm going to need another $5,000. I'm going to need another $10,000. Oh, and by the way, if you don't send it to me in the next week, I'm calling immigration to let them know you committed marriage fraud so that they can put you in deportation proceedings and deport you. And sure enough, uh, the, you know, if, if the payment's not made, they get reported, okay? Uh and sometimes it's reported anonymously. Sometimes they get someone else to report it, whatever it is. You know, the person who came in and got the green card so quickly and, and then the green card and thinks that they're off the hook, um, it doesn't work like that, okay? They're always on the hook, always. They're, they're getting the green card doesn't end that. And so that's one of the big things that happens. Another is... They know nothing about immigration law, so they don't, sometimes, they don't consummate the marriage, they don't live together, they go over some pre-memorized thing of, you know, what each person has, the color of their toothbrush and what they ate, you know, the night before type thing. But at the interviews, they're conducted separately between the husband and the wife, and invariably, the officer is going to ask something that they didn't pre-designate on their list. And then instead of saying, I don't know or whatever, they make something up. And then, of course, both of them have completely different answers. And, of course, boom, it gets denied. And sometimes they'll get the issuance of, you know, that it wasn't bona fide and there was marriage fraud. Sometimes what happens is the people end up getting in a massive fight. And the U.S. citizen uh, doesn't appreciate being used. Sometimes they think, you know, they, they really grow to like or love the person and they don't like that the person just totally used them. So they send in all the proof to immigration of the marriage fraud. They just, they just flat out send it in. Uh, and so, as you can see, more or less, these are just a few examples. Uh, I have a lot more, but, you know, Time's limited. So, number one, it's not legal. Number two, 
you're always on the hook and you're never going to be off the hook. And number three, there's a lot of different ways to come in that are legit. You just don't know about them. Hence the reason to get a consultation from an immigration attorney to see what your real options are and to not go down the path that you're going to regret. Okay?